he did leave a note that was concerning to the family and concerning to the police department. I say he's right here. What is that? There's no way. It did look like maybe it, it was a truck like that was buried. Bed, the bed of a truck and the top of the cab. In Arundel County, Maryland, we're here with Detective Jay Schlein. Although this case is what we consider, you know, a cold case, we always try to locate our missings. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't put them on a shelf somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And we're always, you know, with new technologies that come mm -hmm. up, you know, that lends itself, you know, potentially to a case like this. You know, when, when our supporters first gave us this case, uh, you know, as soon as I reached out, you were you didn't hesitate you know you, you weren't like weirded out or you know didn't want any involvement you're completely open like if you want to help help like we're we're open and so that says a lot about you as a well, cold case that. detective yeah. like being willing to this case is cold if i can get help give right. me help you know there's there's things that i could have missed mm -hmm. okay there's you know it takes community i mm -hmm. mean we're all in this together and so I guess let's get right to it. Uh, we're, we're looking for Benjamin. Yeah, Benjamin Sagan. Um, he went missing um, on 2-26-2012. Uh, we believe he was operating a 2002 Chevy pickup, blue in color. It was bearing Maryland registration 21 L Lincoln 939. Benjamin was supposed to go that morning to his church. He used to set up. That church was located at 710 Ridgely Avenue in Indianapolis. Members of the church said that Ben did not show up. Ben would normally go to his house around lunchtime. Um, he failed to show around lunch. The family became concerned after church had started and ended. Mm -hmm. um, he, he didn't arrive home, so they contacted us. We initiated a missing persons investigation. Concerning to us, he, he did leave a note that was concerning to the family and concerning to the police department. So we, uh, we conducted some um, water searches and we conducted some air searches and numerous other resources. But to this date, we haven't you know, located Mr. Sagan or his vehicle. Right. So we believe the two are together, mm -hmm. okay? Um, there's information that he could have gone into the water Anne Arundel County has miles and miles of waterfront. Yeah, yeah. And so we're looking for essentially a needle in a haystack. What makes this investigation difficult is he didn't have a lot of friends that he was hanging out with. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't have a cell phone. You know, um, there wasn't a whole lot of people that we could talk to. He lived with his parents. And then um, he would go to church, he would set up for the congregation, and then he would you know, come home for lunch, do the service, and then he would go home. The only other area that the family uh, knew that he went to was the library right there at the uh, Broadneck Peninsula. And other than that, you know, he, he wasn't one of those guys that went to went to parks to you know fish or hunt or you know didn't have a lot of friends okay uh so was there any hobbies just 
nothing. No, like you, no just hobbies. Just church. And no, uh, no, no, no girlfriend, boy, <coughs> boyfriend, or nothing like that. Nothing. Just nothing at all. No. With all of that, why don't you bring us into like what you guys have done with the case so far? We've covered over 20,000 acres. Right here was his home. We searched around that area, around his home. The church was actually located to the south. That's approximately 4.69 miles. This yellow area mm -hmm. is an area we searched in a helicopter. Just because we search in a helicopter, the viewer mm -hmm. up in the helicopter, mm -hmm. you know, looks down for a second and flies over the vehicle and we miss it. Yeah. Okay, that happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We also came into some of these marinas. These these red lines here are, I believe, the lines that, is, is it DNR? Ran, yes. ran the sonar through here? Correct. This is the Route 50 William Preston Memorial Bridge. We checked records and we couldn't find any record that he had crossed this bridge. The area that we were most concerned with was the 450 bridge, which is just to the south along the Severn. This was another area um, that we searched with with uh, sonar. Why, why don't we zoom out and, and take us to his house and where, where his house was, where we believe his last known location was. How many boat ramps are right near his house? Just in this area, in this community, we have one ramp here. We have another boat ramp here, another boat ramp at Padickery Point. I say he's right here. I say he's absolutely right here in one of these boat ramps closest to his home. And we're working with a five mile radius that really sets the standard for a lot of our searches. For us and what we've learned in our cases and a lot of what we've solved, this fits textbook. And that's where we're gonna start at those boat ramps. And we'll rule them out one by one by one. And if we have to, we'll clear the entire peninsula and uh, I'm very, very optimistic. You know, if, if he is here, he's underwater, we're gonna find him today or tomorrow for sure. I have, I have, I can feel it. Everything adds up. Benjamin disappeared with his 2002 Chevy S10 pickup truck, which behind me at the top of the hill, you can actually see this Chevy S10 pickup truck similar, almost identical, except for the color that he went missing in. So that's exactly what we're looking for. It's gonna be really easy for me to tell if we find a pickup truck, if it's a Ford, Dodge, regardless, we're diving on it, we're gonna see it. But it's really ironic that his truck, same model, is sitting right at the top of the hill behind us at our first location. Is this where he's at? I don't know. Eight feet out here. Those are just pylons. Pylons. We gotta be really careful, you know, with these pylons and these boats in the marina that if something comes in here, it's not hiding from us. This is the boat ramp to the west, right? So there's another boat, that is boat ramp to the east as my most highly probable area that I think that he's at. So you got an end of a road right here. The dead ends over here into the corner. It's only two feet deep right here though, so not possible. We, we, we need uh, roughly about eight feet of water on this one because of the water clarity in here, a lot of good clarity. So it's, we're, we're working with uh, somewhere that's gonna be deep enough to conceal a vehicle possibly underneath the bridge, off of one of these boat ramps. Anything's possible with this. This is either gonna be a really quick day or a really long weekend. Scan it here. 
15 feet out here. Six feet right here, man. If he came down that road and launched, it's gonna push out possibly all the way over here. They're trying to scan underneath all these boats and stuff to make sure nothing's hiding. See it right here? That is a canoe. Pretty big boat. Still got like a slick down there. Two boat ramps down, and we cleared out this uh, cove here. Now we're going to head over to um, location number three, um, which Carson says that's going to be our lucky location. That's going to be where we're going to find Benjamin. I agree. I, I, I think Carson's um, reasoning is uh, very smart. After all, Carson was completely spot on with Jimmy's location as well. Like we, we mapped it out, we looked at it, and Carson was like, this is right here where he is. And sure enough, Jimmy was right there. feet deep that we've been scanning the past uh, about two miles here this peninsula you know you can see up here on the shoreline it's not uh, you know it's, it's, it's not ideal for the vehicle to have gone in anywhere near here but I don't want to miss anything Right now we are coming up onto the third boat ramp, which is just two miles from his home. Uh, from the looks of it, it's going to stick out further into this water, which means it's going to be deeper over here, possibly. And this area has never been searched before. Uh, the previous water searches that have been done uh, weren't conducted right here that where we're about to scan so so far with what they've scanned and what we have rescanned it's been accurate I didn't find anything where they've searched right now we're getting into an area uh, that has not been searched very promising these locations that we're going to are locations we're checking for a reason there's a lot of probability in these locations and the more we rule them out the closer we are getting to Benjamin six feet it's definitely deep enough to conceal a vehicle pylon nice imaging up through there you can see everything nothing hiding 6.7 feet, definitely deep enough in here to hide a vehicle. Man, what is that? You see that? Dude, there's no way. No way. There's no way to get a vehicle right here. It's gotta be a boat or something. Definitely something. Come back over here with the live scope. Yeah, it's not a vehicle. But what is that? What is that though? That was weird. 
catching something right here. Did he go off the end of that and then float into here? It's still catching my eye right there. Like I, I can't, I can't figure out what that is. Like straight up, I. It I, did look like maybe it, it was a truck like the, that was buried. The bed of a truck and the top of the cab is what I saw. And if it comes in off the end of that road, it's possible it could have floated in here. And there's no kidding that there's a difference in elevation on live scope. I couldn't make out wheels or anything, but I saw a difference. It does in look elevation. like a cab, like it could be a cab of a vehicle. Here we are. What is that? It makes no sense for the vehicle to be here, but... There's no road right here. It's something. Right under us right now. pickup truck man it's it's only a couple feet tall I think it's safe to rule that one out for sure I don't see him coming through here here yeah I don't see it we've got all these houses yeah. Yeah. there's a whole bunch of water there's there's two pathways you can pretty much take you got this one over here Yeah, there's no way to make it back there. So there's houses covering all entrances. You'd have to cut through someone's property, leave track marks, destroy mm -hmm. their grass. Everyone here is pretty much well kept. But if we go further down this way, further down west, there's a road. It's uh, like kind of a loop around. Yeah. That you could probably drive right off in. It looks like there's no trees, no foliage blocking, you know, a possible entrance. So I, I can see it's quiet, secluded. 6.30 a.m., I mean, you could easily get away with it. Yep. Again, nothing, man. This is all clear. Where is Benjamin? So, I mean, you guys, you guys really covered a lot of real estate. Just because we didn't find him doesn't mean it's not a successful search. Oh, no, no, no. That just it's means that he's not there. Right, it's a numbers you know, game. So. Process of elimination and one step closer. Right. We'll go back to the drawing board at night, look at all the satellite imaging, and mm -hmm. go over what has been done and what hasn't been done. It's probably end up on the Annapolis one. So. Uh, I would Absolutely. I would think, yeah. Because yeah. he has the ties to the church there, mm -hmm. and he used to live there. Yep. So did he go back where he was familiar? It's possible, oh, and so. it would make sense. Yeah. All right. We'll be back at it first thing in the morning. We know he was tied to the church, less than a mile to this boat ramp from the church to the boat ramp. There's something here, mm -hmm. okay? We can't tell what it is. Is this where Benjamin's gonna be? What is that, 18 feet deep? If anyone has information, tips, or leads for this case, it is recommended that you notify local police immediately. Anne Arundel County Police Department Missing Persons Unit at 410-222-3588 or 410-222-8610 immediately if you have any information regarding this missing persons case.